All right. So, hello everyone. My name is uh, Alex Goldberg and I'm a research fellow at the Center for Engineering and Medicine. We're located in Boston in the Shriners Hospital for Children and uh, Massachusetts General Hospital. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the distribution of electric fields in tissues and specifically in heterogeneous tissues and the electroporation. And uh, I will show how we use the numerical models and quick fields for those tasks. So I have no disclosures. And the contents of the presentation is as follows. I will start with a historical overview on the pulse electric field and biotechnology and medicine. And electric operation is a part of the pulse electric fields domain. I will talk about the fundamentals of uh, membrane, cell membrane electropermeabilization or electric operation. I will talk about the applications of electric operation and biotechnology in medicine. And I will demonstrate the use of quick field for pulse electric field distribution stimulation in the red skin and tissues. This is a project we are heavily involved these days. So the history of the pulse electric fields and electric fields in medicine and biotechnology started at the end of the 18th century. Nolet was the first to observe the red spots which appear on the skin exposed to the electric fields. Then for decades the phenomenon was not investigated too much until the the claim came from industry and the electropure process was invented for milk pasteurization. Now in electropure they used high current fields for heat pasteurization of milk and you can see here uh, the product so it was actually sold on the market. However, the invention of the more advanced and uh, energy efficient methods such as high temperature short time pasteurization eliminates electropure from the market and the electric fields were again forgotten for many years. Until in the 60s, the invention of Dwayavempic to use pulse electric fields instead of the electric permanent and constant electric fields, again brought the pulse electric fields back to the food science. And at this time, the pulse electric fields were used for non-thermal pasteurization of products. So Dwayavempic started with the beer and Selig and Hamilton then investigated the impacts of pulse electric fields for in various products for pasteurization purposes. They also were the first to do the fundamental studies to show that really the non-thermal part of the pulse electric field in pasteurization. So we kill the bacteria not with heat but with the electric fields themselves and I will show later how this is related to the electric operation. Now in medicine the applications of the pulse electric field started in 82 when uh, Neumann was the first to report the usage of the pulse electric fields for gene electro transfer. So he was actually the first to show that if we take genes and gene molecules and cells and apply pulse electric fields we can put the gene inside the cell and then this way we can manipulate the cells. Now in medicine practically Louis Mir was the first to use uh, electric operation, reversible electric operation for tumor killing. In this case they used electric fields to load the cancer cells with the drugs such as mitomycin which selectively affect the tumors. This way they eliminate them. And finally the recent advance in medicine was in the 2005 when Boris Rubinsky and Rafael Duvalas from Berkeley used pulse electric fields in the irreversible electric operation mode oblate cancer tumors directly and I will go specifically on those applications. So I was talking a lot about electric operation and the pulse electric fields and uh, here I would just like to focus on our target. So we have the cell and this cell in this case this is a mammalian cell which has a nucleus inside but the essential organelle in all cells and this is actually what defines the cell is the plasma membrane and here it's in green here. So the membrane separates the cell from the outside. And having a tool which gives us an ability to control the permeability of the cell through the membrane will be very useful. And we use pulse electric fields to do this control. So there are several effects which can, electric fields can do to the membrane. But in all of these effects they increase the permeability of the membrane to the out, uh, outside world. So what is the electroporation? Once we apply the electric fields or pulse electric fields on cells, we increase the transmembrane potential. Now, each cell has some transmembrane potential naturally, but once we apply the external electric fields, we actually increase it. And this first equation shows uh, the increase in transmembrane potential after the application of electric field. 
So in this equation, the E is the external field, F some geometry factor of the cell and the conductivities, and theta is the angle between the electric field duration and the location on the cell membrane. Now, what happens once we apply the field on the membrane, and we cause this increase in transmembrane potential? There are several hypotheses. First one was proposed by Zimmerman in 79, so he suggested that we can look at the membrane as the assembly of resistance and capacitors, and once we apply a very high field, we actually cause to the breakdown of the capacitor. However, this hypothesis didn't stand at the experimental data, and that's why there was a need for new hypothesis of what's going on there. And currently in the field it is accepted that once we apply the electric fields, we cause to the appearance of the aqueous pores. So there are two modes of the spores which appear. First is a reversible or hydrophobic form, and you can see it here on the bottom. So here once we apply the fields, we actually cause the breakdown of the membrane, but then if the electric field is not strong enough, the membrane seals back. And this is the hydrophobic pore, which is very unstable. So the, the, uh, potential, the uh, potentially once we apply very high fields, what happens is that we cause the larger pores, and there there is a flip-flop of the lipids from both sides of the membrane, and they form a stable aqueous pore. Now this pore can live for hours, actually, and then can be this uh, this pore mediates the transport of molecules from the outside to the inside. Now here on the right we put a plot for the a free energy formation of the pores, so there are hydrophobic pore, the shield of the curve of the hydrophobic pore, which shows that it cannot be too high, but once this, high, this level here is achieved, this is a critical radius r, what happens is that it moves to the hydrophilic pore, so this part of the curve, W1, explains this, this pore, which is a stable one, and this part explains the hydrophobic pore, hydrophobic pore. Now, the problem is that nobody until now could see the pores, and this is all a theoretical uh, concept. However, it is, was uh, recently confirmed by experimental uh, data using multimolecular stimulations, and what we can see here on the top is the model of the membrane, and so the the lipids are in yellow, the heads of phospholip phospholipid heads are in uh, blue, and the water molecules are in pink on the top. Once we apply the fields, the water on both sides of the membrane form something which is called the water gaps. So this water gap starts with a single fingers of water molecules which form through the membrane, but then they grow up and they actually cause to the flip-flop of the lipids on both sides of the membrane. So we can see here the blue heads is the phospho uh, phospholipids, and they come from the both sides of the membrane, they actually form the stable aqueous pore. So multimolecular stimulation actually confirm that there are previous theoretical data and the theoretical models of the pore formation. Now here I would like to summarize what happens to the tissues or cells once we apply the pulsed electric fields. I put the two major parameters here, one is the electric field strength and one is the pulse length, and we can see that there are several effects which can happen. So first, there is no effect. If we use very short pulses, or with very high fields, or very long pulses, but very low field, will not be any effect on the cell. Next, we come to the area of the reversible electric operation. This is a very thin area, of the, uh, but specific parameters were shown to cause reversible permeabilization of the cell membrane after the application of pulse electric fields. Me reversible means that we form the pores, they then seal back, but the cells or tissues survive. The next area is the area of irreversible electric operation. This is the area where we we'll mostly work on. So in this area, we kill the cells or tissues by non-thermal pulse electric fields. And how do we do it, presumably, is by creating large pores on the cell membrane. Now the largest area here on the top is the area once we apply very long pulses and very high fields, and here we come to the area to, of the thermal damage. And in many cases, we don't want to be there because the effects are uncontrollable and they can destroy the, not only the tissue we want to destroy, but also the non-target tissue nearby. So here we summarize the effects of the electroporation of the pulse field on cells altogether. So this is the cell. It can be an area of the no effect. Some recent work show that pulse electric fields can be stimulating, so they cause cells to grow faster and these are the stimulating electric fields, so the cells start to proliferate much faster. Then there is an area of reversible electroporation, 
and in reversible air preparation there are two possible outcomes. First is the cell survives and nothing happens after the pores receive, and second one cell die by apoptosis, presumably. Next area is non-thermal irreversible duct operation. This is the area once we want to use it for disinfection or for tumor ablation. And cells here die by two processes and we still don't know exactly which one of them is true. So they can die both by apoptosis and necrosis. And finally is the thermal damage so cells die by necrosis. Now we are very interested in the electric operation of the skin. And we are interested in it for several reasons. One, of course, is the delivery. Delivery of pharmaceuticals, delivery of genes, delivery of other molecules to the skin, and the operation gives us a very convenient method to deliver them because it doesn't use any needles. So we put the top of the surface electrodes, apply the fields, and the molecules we're interested in go inside. The other interesting application of the operation of the skin is for wound healing and for scar, uh, scar treatments. And this is our interest, direct interest in the Shiran's Burn Hospital in Boston. So we want to ablate the scars. And for these purposes, we need to understand how the electric field distributes inside the skin, because skin is very complex tissue. So not only very complex you know, biologically, it's also very complex even for electric field distribution. So on the left here, I show the presentation, schematic presentation of the skin as is seen in the histology. And already here, you can see that the skin is a very complex tissue with many uh, many substances and appendages. So this is an example of the red skin. And it starts with a stratum corneum. This is a very surface uh, layer, which is very thin, about 100 microns. Then there is a the area of the epidermis. It's a, it's a purple here. It's a one to two cell layer. Next, we have the area of dermis. And it's a very complex area. We have the collagen fibers here in pink. We have hair follicles here. We have sebaceous glands. We have fat, so it's very complex tissue. And then in rats, and we have the muscle. So here in the bottom, we have the muscle tissue, and finally we have the uh, subcutaneous tissue, which is connect. It's mostly connective tissue and fat. Now, and what is complex is that each of these components has its own electrical conductivity, which is tough to measure, but we can estimate, or there is data literature about it. However, once we apply the electric fields, this conductivity changes. So here I put the electrical conductivity before the electric operation and after the electric operation and during the electric operation. So we can see that in some tissues uh, such as muscle, it goes up two times, in stratum corneum it can go up to several orders of magnitude. And these factors, of course, impact the distribution of the electric field. And if we have a specific area we want to target, for example, for tumor ablation or for scar treatment, we need to take all these things into account. Now, Analytically, this is impossible to solve, and that's why we need numerical stimulations, and for this reason, we will use the quick field package. And again, the goal here is to see what happens with the fields inside the tissue, heterogeneous tissue specifically, like skin here, once we apply the electric fields. So I'm going now to the model, and for these purposes, we developed uh, two models. I will start with the geometry. So, so this is the quick field working space. And uh, the quick field working space, we have several blocks we are working with. The first one is the model. So to solve the electric operation uh, problem, as we solve it now, we're working in the transient problem mode. Why transient? Because they, we have the pulse uprise, pull duration, then pulls the decay. So we define here the pulse duration and the problem for one single pulse with the length of uh, 100 microseconds. And here are the steps and parameters of the time stimulation we're using. Next, we'll build the geometry. Now, the geometry is a bit complex. Because, as I mentioned before, we have different layers. And here we can see all the layers. inside and the mesh we generated for this problem. So currently I stay on the dermis layer, this is the muscle layer, this is the subcutaneous tissue, and here very small we can see both stratum corneum and epidermis. 
here there. So the geometry we choose to work is very close to the actual geometry we work with the real rats and the real skin. And this form is actually formed because of the skin flap we use. So we pick up the piece of the red skin. This is the red skin which goes up and then we pick it up. And here is the boundary conditions which we use to grab the skin and to apply the electric fields. So in the, in the geometry area we define our blocks. And in this case, we can see as, as we use in the, the normal skin, normal skin histology, we have the stratum corneum, we have the epidermis, we have dermis, muscle, and subcutaneous tissue. And at the edges, we define the left electrodes, which is here, and the right electrode. Now, the boundary conditions here as well as the same we used. So, the left electrode is zero volt. And in the right electrode, it is the pulse condition, so it's 500, 500 volts. And here is how we represent the inputs in the quick field. And when the next input is as we apply the electric field. So we have some properties of the tissue before we apply the electric operation and after that. So for these reasons, we actually build two models. The first model describes the electric field distribution in the tissue before the electric operation. So we have the, our regular layers here with a specific conductivity. And in the, on the left, we can see the working model. Now next, we build additional problem where we use part of the tissue which passed the electric operation. So not all this tissue is electroporated, only the areas which are close to the electrodes. And these areas, we actually uh, we describe them here as the electroporated dermis, electroporated epidermis, stratum corneum, and electroporated subcutaneous tissue. Now, what is different between the tissue before electroporation and after is the electrical conductivity. So if the electrical conductivity of dermis here was 0.2, same as the mentor, in the epidermis, after the operation, it was 0.8. And here we put it inside all the parameters about the epidermis before the operation, epidermis after the operation. Now, what is important that all these blocks which are marked as electric operation, they are located in this area. And this is the arbitrary decision we decided to do for this specific model. Because our first solution showed that the large field distribution was here. So this area was actually the first one to pass electric operation. Now, after solving the transient solution, we got two different, resu uh, two different uh, results of those stimulations. So here, what we can see is the electric field distribution of the, electric of the fields inside the skin before the skin was electroporated. So the conductivities of the tissue were the original ones. So on the top, we can see which time point exactly it is. So point here, we are in the 70 microseconds. This is the end of our pulse. So I use the pulses of 70 microseconds. And using the movie button here, we can see actually the play and see the dynamics of the, of the field distribution inside the skin during the electric operation. So play the button. We see we start with a no field because there is no field distribution inside. So this is the 10 microseconds. And we can see already here that there is a large field inside the dermis and some penetration of the field inside the muscle. This is 20 microsecond electric field. Again, large field in the dermis and increase in the muscle. Continuous increase in the field in the muscle and of course and everywhere else. This is 40 microseconds, so now we're inside the pulse. So what you can imagine from here is that the largest fields we get is in this area and inside the muscle also in this area. And here is the area where the conductivity changes. And so our next model will submit the initial conductivities for the, the, for the electroporated tissue at those areas where the fields were the highest. So at 60 microseconds. And now we are at the 70 microseconds. This is the largest field. And we can see it again in, inside the penetration inside the muscle. And next, we see the relaxation of the field. So the tissue, we 
presented as an assembly of capacitors and resistances and the uh, first we charge the tissue and now what we see here is the discharge. So eventually we looked at the process of the field distribution inside the different layers of the tissue during the electric operation and now we can play dynamically in the quick field. Now, if we want to see how the fields distribute inside, we can do that. If we go to the 70 microsecond, this is the end. So, we can zoom in and see exactly which fields and which parts of the tissue. In picture properties here, we can change the, the map, the output map. So, this gives us a more precise field distribution areas. And the next, I want to go to the second simulation. Now, in the second simulation, we saw the fields after the electric operation. So, this means that this area, which is denied by two curves, is the area where the tissue was electric operated and where the electrical conductivity was changed. And we again need to solve it from the, uh, from the beginning, the transit solution. And we can see the results here. So again, no field at the beginning, and now we're assuming that this part of the tissue was electroporated. So again, even now from the very beginning, we can see that the field inside the muscle are larger, and I use the same same uh, map, the same color map in the previous solution and and currently. So this is 20 microsecond. The fields are large. And we see the high increase of the electrical field distribution inside the muscle. Uh, it's very interesting that we can see actually at every 10 microsecond what's going on here. So this field is almost in, at the end of the pulse. And it So now what I want to do is actually to compare the electric field distribution inside the tissue before and after electric operation under the assumption that the applied voltage is the same. So here what we see is the 70 microsecond time. So this is exactly the time where the pulse ended. And we can see that there is a high field both in the epidermis, in the dermis, in the muscle and in subcutaneous tissue. Now to make sure that I'm working the same App, go to field picture properties, and here is 50 volt per, per meter. Now, if I'm going back to the tissue before the operation, and I want to put here the same, so we can see a striking difference that the field inside the muscle before the operation and after the muscle was operated is different. Now, this is very important for many applications because we exactly need to know where, what is the threshold of the, uh, what is the field in a specific area, because the field gives us a threshold of electric operation. And for example, if we want to deliver drugs or to the tissue, we need to know which field is where and then what part of the, what part of the tissue. So we can actually put together, this is the electric field distribution and this heterogeneous tissue before the operation and this is the distribution 
of select operation. Oops, sorry, <laughs> of select operation. So our solution shows that the distribution of the field is dynamic. It depends on the electrical conductivity, but electrical conductivity depends on the field themselves. And quick field actually provides a very convenient and fast tool both for the solution and visualization of this problem. So for those of you who are interested to learn more about electrical operation, I assemble here basics of the uh, the basics and the major references in the field, both theoretical and practical. 